Now is the winter of our discontent, made into glorious summer by this sun of York. And all the clouds which loud upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths. Our bruised arms hung up for monument. Our stern alarums changed to merry meetings. Our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim visaged war has smoothed his wrinkled front. And now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly into a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasings of a lute. But I, as I am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an armorous looking glass. I that am but rudely stamped, and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nip. I that am curtailed fair proportion, cheated of feature by the assembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world scarce half made up, and am so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me when I halt by them. Why, I in this weak piping time of peace have no delight to pass away the time unless to spy my shadow in the sun and descant on my own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous, through drunken prophecy, libels, and dreams, to turn my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate of one against the other. And if King Edward is true and just, as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, why at this time should Clarence be closely mewed up about a prophecy which states that G of Edward's heirs Now is the winter of our discontent, made into glorious summer by the sun of York, and all the clouds which loud upon our house, in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monument, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim-visaged war has smoothed his wrinkled front. And now instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly into a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasings of a lute. But I that I am not shaped for sport tricks, nor made to court an ominous looking glass. I that am but rudely stamped, and want love's majesty,
to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. I let him curtailed a fair proportion, cheated a feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world scarce half made up, and am so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I hope by them. Why, I, in this weak piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless to spy my shadow in the sun, and to scant on my own deformity. Therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain, and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I lain, inductions dangerous, through drunken prophecy, libels, and dreams, to turn my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate of one against the other. And if King Edward is as true and just as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, why at this time should Clarence be closely mewed up about a prophecy which states that G of Edward's heirs, the murderer shall be.